Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, I see that uh, the room is still filling up slightly, um, but um, I'll make a start so that we uh, get the best use of the time that we have available. So thank you very much for taking time, first and foremost, on a Friday afternoon uh, to come along to this discussion about the issue of antisocial behaviour on Twickenham Green. Um, it is an important issue for us, and I think it is, you know, it demonstrated how important it is by the um, level of resource that we've put into just this one meeting and, and the people that we've been able to bring along. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is just run through the event rules. Uh, when you clicked on the link, you would have seen a sign saying, please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Now raising a hand isn't going to really help us manage the order of the people. So, you know, it's, it's going to be very difficult. It doesn't say one, two, three, four, it's just, hand is raised and I want to make sure that the people get the chance to ask their questions in an orderly fashion. So what I would suggest we do is use the chat function if you wish to ask a question just type question and then we'll be able to see on and on and on in the exact order of the uh, way that people have asked questions. Please don't use the chat function for other points or for further discussion and the reason for that is not that we, not that we wish to um, uh, discourage discussion. It's just that if there's a lot of other chats going on, I won't be able to see who the next questioner is and I don't want anybody to be missed. Okay, so there are a few rules on these things. Um, first and foremost, this event is being recorded and will be published after the event on the council websites. All attendees other than the panel are muted and if you wish to speak, please register within the chat. Uh, please make sure that you have a name against your um, account, uh, because it's just, you know, iPad won't be of any use to us. Tom's iPad, that's fine, but iPad, so you, we need to be able to identify you for asking the questions. You don't need to give your full name if you wouldn't rather, but, you know, an identifiable name. Um, so if you do wish to speak, it would be good if you could turn your camera on. Um, all attendees have been sent the event et etiquette. Um, we would ask you to be uh, respectful of all speakers. We sure we won't need to, but if we do need to mute or remove participants, our event staff will do so, but I'm sure that that won't be necessary. If there are any problems, we'll communicate with the individuals via the chat or by inviting them into an adjoining virtual discussion. I hope that's clear. So, the people that we have with you today um, in the meeting are the Ward Councillors for South Twickenham, that's uh, Councillors Bennett, Mansfield and Butlin. We have the ward councillors for West Twickenham, that's councillors Alan Jorians and Helen Lee Parsons, councillor Helen Lee Parsons. We have uh, councillor Richard Baker, who is the lead member for business. We have the uh, police borough commander, chief superintendent Sally Benatar. We have inspector Rebecca Robinson from Richmond Police. Uh, we have the head of licensing for Richmond Council, who's Nick Stevens. We have the Director of the Environment, Paul Chadwick, and the Assistant Director of the Environment, Ishbel Murray. And we have the Head of Community Safety for Richmond Council, that's Robin Thomas. And we have uh, from Park Guard, um, Joe Lazzone. So there are, I hope, if you have a question that needs asking, we've got the right team assembled to help deal with the question that you have. Um, to give you some background, um, to where we are at the moment. We, of course, we're aware that there is a problem on Twickenham Green. However, this is not limited solely to Twickenham Green at the moment. We are seeing similar um, incidents of antisocial behaviour breaking out on Richmond Green. We hear about it at Moormead. We hear about it at Ham Common. There are various levels of um, antisocial uh, disturbance and antisocial behaviour which are breaking out. And Sally, I'm sure, will be wanting to talk about um, how this is not simply a Richmond issue either. Um, we are doing what we can with the resources that we have and the powers that we have to ensure that we take action where possible. The council's resources are not finite. The people on the ground, um, we will need to make sure that we have the correct level of enforcement officers, and I'll be going into some more detail about that later. But of course, I mean, everybody wants their area to be prioritised. And we'll also be talking about how we're addressing issues of licensing and, of course, the issues of uh, urination, defecation, and those matters of antisocial behaviour as well. Um, so rather than 
I mean, my intention today very much is that this is an opportunity for you to share your views. Um, you could listen to me for the next hour. I could talk for the next hour, believe you me, but this isn't an opportunity. So I would like to hand over to um, Sally Benatar, who's going to give an update for you from the police um, angle and perhaps be um, available straight away to answer questions specifically relating to policing matters. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. I recognise um, some of you. First of all, I want to say um, that we are listening to what you are saying, and I, I recognise the concerns you have. I've already seen some on the chat bar already this afternoon. Um, I want to say a few things about policing at the moment, and then uh, more specifically around uh, Twickenham um, and, and the wider borough of Richmond. Um, since the coronavirus started uh, and the health pandemic, we've been um, doing our best to get our policing approach right um, with the resources that we have. And as you know, um, as residents, it's changing every weekend as the lockdown changes, um, the circumstances change. And we are very committed to being visible, uh, to preventing crime and to responding to emergencies. And uh, we, want to do that across all of Richmond Borough uh, and, and as well uh, the other parts of London. So as you know, um, I'm, I'm the Borough Commander. I also look after Kingston, Merton and Wandsworth Boroughs. Um, and I'm part of the Metropolitan Police covering all of London. At the moment, you'll, you will have seen what is going on um, uh, across London um, with uh, large gatherings, anti-social behaviour, uh, people drinking, congregating, having barbecues, having raves, which sometimes leads to antisocial behaviour and crime. Um, this, is, this is happening all across London. And on Wednesday night, we had uh, a, a, a bad incident in Brixton where a, a gathering um, um, overwhelmed the police and uh, officers were attacked. So I, I want to give you that as context. I'm not being at all defensive here. I recognise your concerns. I know that I know what you want to see in Twickenham, on Twickenham Green and um, around the other wards. I know that you want to see as many um, visible police officers and community support officers patrolling as you as you can. And I want that to happen as well. At the moment, we are balancing where all our different resources are. We are mobilising um, police officers. Uh, throughout the day and night to go to the hotspots across London and of course we are mobilising our own resources here in South West London to make sure that places such as Twickenham Green uh, and other areas in Richmond do have patrols um, where uh, we will intervene and prevent antisocial behaviour and crime. Um, I also want to say um, I, I've seen, obviously I, I look at social media, I do, I do see what you are saying and I hear what you are saying as well. We work really closely with the council and the different officers, um, whether it's the licensing teams, um, with, with pubs and supermarkets on conditions, whether it's with um, the park guard, the, the local authority enforcement officers. We, we, we all want to do what we can to, to mobilise as many um, resources, whether it's police or, or, or not police, uh, our special constables, our volunteers. Uh, we're very committed to doing that. And we do have a range of powers that we can use, um, including uh, dispersal orders. Um, and we, we will do that. And I, I will bring in Inspector Robinson in a moment just to say a little bit more about um, Richmond. So she is the inspector in charge of the Richmond Borough neighbourhood teams. Um, so I wanted to, to say that as to start with. Um, when you ask me for a dedicated town centre team for Twickenham um, or, or uh, other parts of the borough, or whether you ask me for permanent police cars parked outside certain hotspot locations or officers patrolling on a 24 hour basis on foot, I can't always deliver that for you. Um, we, we want to be as, vil as visible as we can we have to prioritise um, answering the emergency calls, um, which is obviously when, when people call 999 and, and really need our help within 15 minutes to come, we have to prioritise that. And of course, 
we want to deal with those concerns that you are telling us about um, antisocial behavior um, and all, all the different concerns that you've raised. Um, I, I, I know what you were saying. I do want to listen to you. Um, and, I, and I want to, I, I want to um, I explain to you how, how we do that. Over the weekend, we have a policing plan um, where we have a lot of different officers on duty, obviously more in the evenings and going into the night. Um, and we, we always have this. This isn't just in a response to what's happened last weekend or what's, what's just happened. We always have a policing plan. And since the lockdown started, um, we have reviewed it all the time to see what can we enforce, uh, what can we encourage, absolutely what can we do. So we always have a plan. And of course, we recognise at the moment with these particular circumstances of the very hot weather, pubs not being open inside, but being able to sell alcohol, um, supermarkets selling alcohol, um, the easing of the lockdown so bigger groups can, can gather without breaching the regulations. Um, and, and also, I think, a, a sense of um, from, from some people who are out there that they want to party. So we are managing all that and uh, we're doing what we can to, to put resources in place. And of course, we also look to the longer term. This isn't just about the, the lockdown and, and what's happening now this weekend. This is about how we police Twickenham in the future, um, how you know who your dedicated ward officers are, um, how, you know, do you know well, what, uh, how you contact us? Do you know about our community contact sessions? Uh, so we, we want to talk about that now. But I do understand that, that today um, this is about how it is now. Um, so I'm just going to pass on to Inspector uh, Robinson to say a couple of words about um, Richmond uh, Borough locally and, and Twickenham. And then obviously, um, however you, you want to do it, Chair, in terms of um, answering any questions. Yeah. Hello, Evie. Hello, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Um, yeah. Hello. So I'm the new uh, neighbourhood inspector for Richmond and Twickenham. Um, so I took over uh, a few months ago. So it's a bit of a strange time uh, to have been taken over. Um, but the team are doing some fabulous work. You've probably seen uh, specifically uh, Twickenham related. There's been a, a couple of pubs um, that we've been working quite closely with. Um, that opened for a period of time and have now uh, closed. We're working very closely with our licensing teams and with the council licensing teams uh, around sort of preparing for the 4th of July. Uh, we've got plans you, you've probably uh, seen on social media, sort of the disturbances around uh, Richmond. Uh, I am aware that there's concerns, obviously. We, we put a uh, dispersal zone in, which you may be aware for Richmond, that obviously that may cause you concerns in terms of uh, Twickenham so we've got extra the the Twickenham team will be staying on uh, after their normal shift this weekend uh, just to provide some extra coverage and we've got some special constable resources as well and um, as Mom Ma Benatar said we're working on a a uh, sort of a longer plan to give you that coverage um, if anybody doesn't know who their their ward officer is I can certainly I'm sure we can pass the details on regarding that because uh, I think that is that is really important that you have access to your local ward team. Um, and that's it really, I don't want to take up too much of the time talking, so um, if we wanted to open it up for questions. Yeah. Can I just say one more thing, Councillor Roberts? Um, uh, just, just I, I do want to be quite honest about managing expectations this weekend. Yeah. Uh, some of our dedicated ward officers who are normally on the wards in Twickenham won't be. They'll be in central London in uh, protecting Westminster or protecting other parts of the capital. Um, that isn't an ideal position for me. I would like to have all our officers on the Southwest where you need them. But because um, that, when we have um, intelligence and when we have policing risk at the level that we are having at the moment um, with what is happening in London, the tension, we, you know, we understand the tension um, uh, around the Black Lives Matter protests um, and then ongoing protests and results. We, we have to, we, we have to sometimes supply officers from uh, this borough into other parts of London. And um, I, I'm not even going to say about how, um, you know, uh, 
how Richmond compares in terms of overall crime compared to some of those other boroughs, because that isn't what that that isn't helpful for you. You're talking to me about how safe you feel and what you feel about antisocial behaviour and crime. Um, but that we are very often not the first people who get help with additional resources. We did on Sunday, uh, simply because we did have a, a couple of uh, serious incidents um, across the four Southwest boroughs. It's unusual for us on Southwest to get officers from other parts of London come to us. It's normally the other way around. And, and I'm sure that you understand why that is. Um, and the, 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 the commands team from the Met who are trying to keep the city um, safe and, 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 and to stop serious disorder. Um, sometimes they direct that we do, we do have to send uh, more officers um, from our neighborhood teams elsewhere. And if they're not in Westminster, then they're quite likely to be backfilling on our emergency response teams because we have to send our public order trained officers, obviously, into, into other situations. So we have to juggle our resources all the time. Um, I won't go into all the operational details of it, but um, but happy to explain more. I, I would just add, um, sorry, if I could just quickly add to that. So we've been working a lot this week to, to combat that. Um, as Mum said, our, our resources are stretched in terms of working with um, lo working with our local council, um, working with BTP, um, and yeah, doing some uh, joined up working around uh, with youth workers uh, over this coming weekend. Um, just to sort of try and um, try and combat that uh, creatively and, and joined up. Okay, um, I see that there are some questions coming in on the chat. Just, just to reiterate, if you want to ask a question, it's going to be so much better if you unmute, well, let us know you want to ask a question, we'll unmute you and you can put your question, for, otherwise the chat just gets really full. Uh, so please don't type your questions into the chat. Um, I've got Diane Perea. If she, if Diane could be unmuted, and then we can, Diane, you can uh, ask yes. your question directly. Yeah, I've asked. Can you hear me? I can. I've asked quite a few questions because I, along with a few other people on this call, we live right on First Cross Road, so it's just a few feet, and it's the green, and. I'm not working right now, so I'm home all the time. And I've seen police twice. And once it was first in the morning, like eight, seven in the morning. And then another time was middle of the day on a Tuesday. Those are the exact times where there's no issues on the green. So why are police not ever coming 10 p.m. onwards, for instance, ever? And yesterday I tried to call 101, couldn't get through. And so nothing can be done. It's, it's relentless. It's every Thursday to Sunday every single week. Um, so thank you, Diane, and I read your question as well on the bar. Um, we, we are out in the hours, um, in, in the afternoons, evenings, and into the night. Um, that's where the demand is, and, and we are out. And certainly um, Twickenham Green is, is, is a place that will be patrolled. I'm sorry that you haven't seen our officers at those times. I understand your concerns. Um, 101, um, it, Please call it. Uh, it will be answered. I'm sorry that at the moment it's uh, the level of, of um, concerns from residents across London who are phoning 101 to report gatherings exactly in the same way that you are, whether it is urination or uh, drinking or antisocial behaviour, will mean that there is a longer delay. Normally, it takes less than a minute to, to have the 101 um, call answered. I know this because I always ask residents, how, how long is it taking you these days? Um, we, we, have, we have patrols at those times and we will continue to do so. Um, but if, if there are patrols at those times, then why is every single Thursday to Sunday partying going on till two in the morning? Are the patrols just going by and saying hi and moving on? Like, why is it still happening then if there are patrols at those times? And so there's, there's a variety of patrols. So some of them will be uh, the, the neighbourhood officers, foot patrol, cycle patrol, and they, and they should, you know, they will be out there at the times they're on duty. They're not on duty 24 hours a day. So mm -hmm. there will be some days when the, you know, the Twickenham ward officers may not be on. However, at the moment, um, the, we have lots of different resources, as Rebecca has described, 
um, out in cars, buses, um, going to the places where we need them. So I, I guess what I would say to you is that we, we are getting a lot of calls coming in and we will always aim to deploy officers. What happens in reality is that um, we, we're, sometimes when we go before anybody's there, we're not dispersing because there's nobody there and it can be very quick to, to build up a group of people. Um, we, we, we want to get the time exactly right that we are intervening there. And as I said at the start, we can't have permanent patrols on every one of the greens, parks and open spaces across Richmond Borough um, in anticipation. We, we do look at the, of course we look at Twickenham Green. That is, on, that is one of the areas where we are, um, you know, everybody on duty this weekend knows that they, they need to be patrolling there. And there are certain resources that are deployed there. And the same with the, the, the council officers as well, you know, it's specifically to those areas. So you should see them. Um, as I said, I can't uh, give you a, a guarantee that there will be a permanent presence there. But of course, for us, what we want to do is if there is something that is, if there's a gathering that is not legal and, uh, you know, we, we think that there's going to be a sound system uh, setting up or whether it's breaching the health protection regulations due to the size of it, then we want to intervene and disperse it. And that is when we look at using our dispersal order powers, which we can't put in preemptively. So I can't say now um, there needs to be one um, tonight, uh, but we will use it um, if we need to. And Rebecca did, she, she was our ops inspector last night doing the late shift and, and did put one in um, uh, elsewhere in Richmond and we have an, a number of others going. So we're absolute, we're, we will do that. Uh, Diane, I don't know if that answers your, some of your questions. I, I do hear your frustration. Um, I wish that we had um, such a big, workforce of officers and and community support officers that every at the moment with this you know this this perfect storm of weather people out lockdown and um, everything that, that we had officers there all the time but we i can't commit to that because we don't have the officers to do it gareth i wonder if this is the moment where we ask park guard or ish bell to explain to the meeting the extra resource we've got for park uh, in terms of park guard officers for this weekend the, the words straight out of my mouth. Yes. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we, uh, hello there, everyone. Um, my name is Joe Lulizo and I'm the service manager for Park Guard. Um, so yeah, this weekend, in addition to the um, two patrols that we have out already, we're deploying, um, we're deploying two additional officers. So we'll have two placed in Twickenham Green and an, another two um, covering Richmond Riverside and into Richmond Green in addition to the two um, patrol officers that we have there already. So they'll be focused in their attempts. I think just going back slightly, we have a large number of parks and open spaces that we do need to cover as well. So when there's two officers out at a time, it, it can be quite challenging. And since the, in response to the COVID pandemic, um, the alfresco element of um, the, of things has been very very difficult to deal with, but just certainly going back to your question, Diane, there as well. I mean, if, if issues like that are reported to the to the parks to the parks team, um, it can be set via our taskings, and certainly times like that are really helpful for us. And I can set the taskings specifically for that time, um, which takes some of the um, some of the pressure off the police because we can deal with public urination by means of an FPN un under the PSPO, most certainly. Okay, for those people, just, just very quickly, um, because we're all used to the jargon and the stuff, FPN, Fixed Penalty Notice. Apologies, Fixed Penalty That's Notice. That's right, indeed, yeah. <laughs> it's easily done, I do it myself all the time. PSPO, Public Space Protection, protection or Preservation? Order. Public order. Space Protection Order, yeah. That's the stuff. Excellent. What people also need to know, um, in addition to the police resource that we've got um, coming in over the weekend, um, we've authorised additional park guard officers to be um, brought in over the weekend. That's in it. Every weekend that we get more park guard officers, it's about another three or four thousand pounds to do that. And what I've done today on hearing the times that they were booked in for, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what time they clock off, and you, I'm, I'm sure you'll understand why. But I have asked for them to be late, later in the afternoon deployment later in the morning clocking off time because that that's the key times uh, but i'm not going to go into more detail about what those times are okay so um david um you have two questions could i ask that david's unmuted david what i would suggest about the unpermitted parked vehicles around the green is a bit of a side issue so drop me an email and i will happily look into that one for you but your question about preventing gatherings on the green in the early hours 
Uh, yeah, th thank you very much. Um, just going back to the, the parking questions, I will certainly drop you a, a separate email, but it is linked hugely to the increase of people that's on the green at the moment. Uh, we've, I, we live on First Cross Road, so we've seen a, a huge increase in the number of vehicles um, that are un, unpermitted being on that street. Is it, forgive me, I'm not familiar with every CPZ in the borough. Are you on the CPZ? Yes. I'll, yes. I'll send the lads round. <laughs> if, they, if, they don't have, if they don't have permits, they'll get a ticket. Lovely. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, my, my question um, was also about the, the group gatherings into the early hours of, of the morning, and, and Diane's already sort of mentioned that uh, in, in her previous question. Um, what, what we seem to be hearing at the moment is very temp, temporary fixes um, for certainly for, for this forthcoming weekend, but not any long term plans. Um, you know, the, the, the situation isn't isolated just to, to this current lockdown or, 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 or few weekends. This goes on throughout the summer. And being a resident on First Cross Road overlooking the green, um, the, 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 the groups with loud music and, and laughing and shouting and so on goes on into the early hours. And I'd like to know what could be done about that more permanently long term you know, could restrictions be put in place that people are moved on post 11 p.m.? Um, could, could there be a curfew for, for people using the green? Appreciate resources are, are limited and, um, and, and the, the, the patrol officers are, have set times. But if one of those set working times is around the, the 11 p.m. To, to midnight area, that would when it would be most impactful moving people on when we don't want them there. I'm sure that Sally and Rebecca will want to come in on the policing aspects. Um, I'm going to be reviewing the um, additional resource spent for additional park guard officers on a weekly basis. This isn't just going to be a one-off um, hit in terms of uh, this weekend's cash. We'll be keeping this under close review um, and it will be a weekly review until such time as we're finding that uh, we're not getting the reports anymore. Uh, Sally, Rebecca? Yes, yeah, I, you go first, Rebecca, and then I'll say something wider about the, uh, the overall resourcing position. Yeah, so I was going to say um, I, I absolutely uh, agree with you, so that we do need, uh, it's not just this weekend, um, and we do need a long-term plan around it. Um, and that's what I've been working very closely with the community um, uh, safety unit in the council around developing um, along with our safer neighborhood boards to see what initiatives we can get uh, around young people, around drinking, working with licensing, all of the partners working together um, across the summer period. Because yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and I wouldn't want you to think we're just putting everything into this weekend and we're going to uh, forget it because that's, that's very much uh, not the case. So yeah, and that's something I'll, I'll be taking uh, forward and responsibility for. Yeah, absolutely. It's not it's not just about this weekend, of course. And we do want to hear from you all the time. So whether you're in on a ward panel, on the Safer Neighbourhood Board, um, in a residence group, on the Neighbourhood Watch, um, it, it's not just a fix for now. Uh, of course it isn't. And can please continue to report it, whether it's 101 via our website, um, uh, whether it's... Um, through the, uh, the Twitter at MetCC. Um, don't contact your neighbourhood teams um, via Twitter directly because they're not on all the time. We don't have any more police officers um, that we can, uh, as with the park guard around paying for more. We have the ones that we have, we're making them work extremely hard obviously, and they're obviously not having rest days and, and doing longer shifts and all that sort of thing. So it's um, there aren't quick term fixes in terms of putting more officers in. We hope that we'll get more officers into the Metropolitan Police. Obviously the, the Home Office are working on that, but of course with the recession, we, we don't know what that will mean for growth. I, I hope we will get more, but we don't know. I, on the, oh, can David, David, we'll let you into us one supplementary if that's right, so make it count. <laughs> just need to give time to unmute. There we go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it was just to come back, uh, just after a bit of a reassurance and a guarantee that uh, we've been told a number of times now to re continue to report these issues. Mm -hmm. And if we're reporting the issues, as, as Diane mentioned also, at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, 
is that we are going to see a response to that because from what it seems is, is even though we are reporting it, it's being recorded, but we're seeing no action and, and it continues into further hours into the, 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 into the early morning. We'll always try to respond. Uh, we triage everything that comes in. We look at the risk. We'll always try to respond. Sometimes we won't be able to respond immediately depending on what it is. If we, if we have something that is uh, more serious, uh, that involves a, a, a threat to life um, over um, a, a gathering, then we would prioritise that. I won't go into all the details of it. You'll understand. We, we always want to, at the moment in particular, uh, we can't always respond. Uh, I, do, I do hear that. I look at the calls that we can't go to. Um, which is why we need to, which is why we need to intervene and nip these gatherings in the bud before it gets to one o'clock in the morning, which is what we want to do. Uh, David, for, for my sins, I also head up the parking enforcement team and uh, I've just asked them to send some more resource uh, your way this weekend. So uh, make sure you've got your permit in your screen, put it that way. <laughs> just, I mean, I think one point which might help um, explain uh, a little bit about um, the powers that we have. Uh, David mentioned the curfew in the 11 o'clock, something like that. I have, I have looked at that personally. There was one of the issues which I raised, tasked my legal officers to go away, find out, you know, could we, as a council, if we wanted to say, right, Twickenham Green, 11 o'clock, doesn't matter what you're doing, even if you're just, you know, quietly walking the dog on your own, can we move you on? Apparently not. That's the case. However, the the Antisocial behaviour, public space protection order powers that are there are really quite strong. What happens first and foremost is that if there's somebody, you know, having a drink and they're making a, making a racket, causing a nuisance or a disturbance, then they can be asked to be moved on by a park guard operative. If they refuse, then we can bring the police in. But there are the, these are the powers that we have at the moment. And I've been advised that trying to get a an injunction against person or persons as yet unknown would not be a legal step that we could take. However, the advice given is the antisocial behaviour PSPO works. Well, it is there to be used in these uh, circumstances. So, yeah, we, we've got the powers and we will be flexing those more, I think is the, the, the uh, tone there. Uh, so, I will go move on to the next question. So, Danny, you've had some questions already. Um, Rachel and Lee. Oh no, sorry, Angela Lozano. I do apologise. This is what happens when there are lots of comments rather than just questions. So, Angela Lozano, please. Hi. Um, yeah, Dave, thanks. Just want to reiterate, obviously, the, the groups and gatherings and everything, and obviously not keep it just to lockdown. Um, I do um, appreciate resources, and I suppose resources are even tougher um at these times without knowing what's going to happen every two weeks but um there is something i would really like to address um i live first uh one a um first cross road so literally opposite the cricket ground uh there is consistent drug dealing and drug dealing for me is a very serious matter um you know i appreciate the crowds and the noise this happens 365 days um, a year. This is nothing new. Um, so I'm not going to go into the, the crowds, which are annoying. Um, but I think there is uh, uh, something that needs to be managed um, quite urgently. Um, this is not only a summer situation. We get drug dealing. Um, we're not quite sure exactly where it's mainly taking place. There's a telephone booth. I don't know if there is the place or it's not. Um, but there is drug dealing happening um, and it happens a lot around our area um, and we, we, we see the kids, um, you know, they're, they're, they're youngsters. Um, I think my, my neighbours um, are, are also on this call and I don't know if other neighbours from, from First Cross Road will have seen anything but, you know, I think the, the cricket ground um, and I, I think they're also online need some sort of support. Um, you know, CCTV needs to be in place around this area. Um, there are a lot of issues, drug dealing, urinating, you've been reported a lot of things, I don't need to list them all. Um, but that, that is serious and, and you know, that, that congregates even more people, I, I presume. Um, you know, we, I have it right out the window, so 
it's a serious matter and I'd like to know how you're controlling that. Okay, Sally. Yeah, so we don't want there to be drug dealing in this area at all. Drug dealing is very clearly linked to violence um, and, and of course is antisocial um, in, in its own way. So it isn't a good thing for you to see. Um, and uh, we, we aim to take action. So please, you have probably have told us about it. So it may be not helpful for me to say, tell us about it, but uh, our, our neighborhood teams are always putting together um, as much as they can um, operations to go and do, do warrants of arrest to try and tackle um, drug dealing. Of course, we do a lot of stop and search um, where we, we do intelligence led stop and search where we will um, go and, and search people and if they, they have uh, drugs on them, we'll, be, we'll arrest them. Um, so we do everything that we can in terms of uh, stopping it. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, drug dealing leads to you know, serious crime. We are taking down uh, drug lines that run from different parts of the UK into, into these boroughs. There, unfortunately, there is, there is drug dealing everywhere, as you know. Uh, we are committed to, to tackling it. Um, all, all I would say is we tell us and we will, um, we, we will do what we can both in terms of short term and building up a case uh, to tackle it. So we, we, do, also, we do whatever we can um, legally do. We're, we're audaciously legal in tackling drug dealing. Rebecca, did you want to say anything specific about your teams? Yeah, so I was just going to, to add, um, so with the, with the SNT teams, we have uh, sort of clusters of, uh, of SNTs and for Twickenham they so we have priorities that we sort of focus our work around so we have a high volume priority um, high risk priority ASB priority and for that area um, drug dealing is the priority because um, yeah I completely agree with everything that's been have been said around it and um, it is important and we do need to deal with it the teams are working very hard to put together um, jobs. Obviously, I can't go into too much of the operational um, detail around it. Um, but if you follow our, our Twitter pages, hopefully, um, as those results come out, hopefully, um, you should be able to see the see the impact. But yeah, as um, as Mum said, please make sure that you tell us about it because um, it all of you know helps our intelligence to build our picture when we're putting these warrants together. Okay. Just um, also, I suppose that emphasizes the point of late night patrolling, you know, that, that like it's needed. It's not just the crowds. There's other things happening yeah. and, and it's important. I appreciate the cost to the council. Um, you know, there are other areas that I, I you know, could, could compliment a lot about. We're obviously now focusing on the challenges, but um, please, you know, late, late night patrolling is important amongst other things because of because of this, this is really, really bad, really in the area. Um, and one last one is um, traffic in, in First Cross Road. Um, I don't know other neighbors, but there are cars flying in the wrong way direction. I don't know if this is for you to know or if, I think it's know, something to take up. Signaling is really bad. Yeah, <laughs> don't I think know it's if something it's to take or what it is, but yeah. Something to take up directly with your ward councillors on, on that mission. I'm sure they'll be delighted to uh, speak to you. Is, it, is, is First Cross south or, or west? Richard Bennett, if it's south, raise your hand. You're, you're muted. Yeah. I believe it's south, if that's the message I'm getting. Take it up with your ward council. Oh. Hello? We'll find out. But Angela, uh, yes, I will find out who your ward councillors are and get back to you. Right. Uh, Onwards and upwards. Okay, so um, Rachel and Lee, you want to ask a question about public urination? They're just looking for you. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, just to, uh, we live right on the green as well, on the green road. Um, so directly onto it. Um, just to echo the previous lady's comments, we've lived here for 14 years. And I can definitely say the only police patrols we ever see are at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, there is no regular police presence ever at night. And we've had um, incidents over the years where we have had to call the police. Um, they have attended, I think one time that was reasonably serious, we were on hold for quite a long amount of time, um, but did eventually get through. However, uh, 
at the moment, I think the thing that is really urgent for us, we're right next door to Collis Alley. The level of public urination is obscene. This is starting in the early afternoon when there are children wandering around. I walked past my, we have a side garden gate. I walked past my garden gate at about half past three in the afternoon this week to find a group of men in their thirties there, all intoxicated, urinating against my gate. Um, I was going to collect my children from school and um, I spoke to them actually and I said, excuse me, that's my gate. And I was told I should just wash my gate. Um, there was nothing, uh, you know, I, I know, what I guess I would like to understand is I understand you, um, the gentleman earlier mentioned there are penalties that can be applied, but if there's no police presence and no one was around, who is going to apply this penalty? And who do I raise this with when this has happened? I, I you know, I was just sort of dealt a fait accompli. And to be honest, do you know what I did? I walked on and I came home and washed my gate, just like he suggested. And this is going on every day. Okay. Um, in terms of urination, then who's we have either the police or park guards have to catch them in the act. Unfortunately, that's the the long and short. Of so it. they're not here. I know, but they 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 it's like the old thing about the green cross code man. They, they can't be there all the time, so uh, they have to be in the you know catch them doing it. Um, what we're trying to do to curb these sorts of um, desires is to you know, really reinvigorate the um, community toilet scheme, which has been you know, out of action for the last three months because of lockdown, but now we're seeing businesses reopening. Uh, the Sussex Arms has been mentioned a few times in the, um, in the site chat, and they are now reopening their toilets for use. Um, I understand that we're also, uh, there's, there's news coming out of the Twickenham Cricket Pavilion, I may be wrong, um, that they will also be allowing use of their toilets um, once they reopen from the 4th. Um, we can go into the discussion about public toilets now, if you wish, um, or we can leave it whilst we're dealing with the antisocial behaviour matters. I'm easy either way. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to toilets in a bit, because I think that the, the question will be raised a few more times. Uh, but as I say, unfortunately, it's a case of catching them doing it. Uh, so, um, Peter, Peter has a question. Yeah, when you, oh good, you've unmuted me. Um, for me, avoidance is better than punishment and we should nudge the people. I live on the green, the green itself. I overlook the green and I can see the hundreds of people out there enjoying themselves and their activities and their pleasure is spoilt by half a dozen people who go right. to their nearest place, right? And this to me is only a short term problem, which is brought about by the pandemic and the keeping everybody indoors. It's not something that I've seen in other years, particularly when the cricket is playing, because there's not so much room for people to be on the green at the time. Um, so what about putting up some port -a What about putting up that lovely French article, the Pissoir? that we find down on the river in Twickenham and moving it up here. <coughs> I'm very glad to see people coming out here. Personally, I'm not being bothered. Personally, I've had no troubles because of people occasionally talking loudly at night, but hey, I was young once. It was 50, 60, 70 years ago, <laughs> but I still remember what it was like. And I enjoyed going out, and I grew up. So that's my two penny worth. Let's get some avoidance rather than some punishment. <laughs> okay, on the subject of Portaloos, um, we've looked at this. Uh, first and foremost, we need to look at the government guidance regarding public spaces and town centres, and the government guidance for public centres and town centres public spaces and town centres is that the use of port should be minimised. And the reason is that they, it's, it's the cleansing regime that goes with it. You can use them, but you have to have a very rigorous cleansing regime alongside. I've got some costs. So um, I'm just going to read this. It's going to be a bit dull, but I'll read it. 
Um, events in Park calculate toilet provision on the ratio of one toilet per 75 to 100 expected females and one per 400 to 500 attending males plus one portable urinal for every 150 men. If there were six toilets provided per site, that would be sufficient. Six at Twickenham, six at Richmond. The cost for providing Twickenham toilets alone would be a weekly cost of 4,560 quid. Now, at the moment, that, you know, that, so do the maths, you're looking at 20,000 pounds expenditure a month on the part of the council. And that's to do the proper job because we would have to put in toilets which are, we, we would have to have a sanitizing regime, which means having people on site. Uh, they would have to be um, fully DDA compliant because we would have to be very aware of the uh, civil liberties, not civil liberties, the, the equalities um, angle on this one. What I can say um, is that the, as I say, the Sussex Arms have started reopening their toilets. One of the issues that you will have regarding people um, who are disgusting enough, to be honest, to uh, urinate and defecate either in people's gardens or against people's fences, is that the chances that they would decide to be so civic-minded as to schlep themselves across the green and use the facilities is, is perhaps imaginative, to say the least. Um, so there's a large cost involved. Um, it isn't the silver bullet. And the thing which I will tell anybody that will listen as far as portable toilets are concerned is that if it was a cheap, straightforward, simple and effective measure, the council would do it because the council likes nothing more. Any council in any country, in any town, in any, all across the world, there's nothing that councils like more than simple, straightforward, cheap and effective measures. Unfortunately, Portaloos at the moment don't seem to be that cheap, straightforward, simple and, and effective measure. Peter. Yeah, I'll just come back with a quick point. TW2 tap room has opened and has a notice outside saying its toilets are available, Good. which is even more on the green than the Sussex Arms. Excellent. I don't think the Prince Blucher has opened up again yet. Um, so any comments about that are not particularly relevant. Arthur's is also open and I gather they have toilets. Mm -hmm. But these places are not open until two o'clock in the morning. No, they're um, not. But the but question are, is, of course, the, you know, do we want... The, the other point about providing portable toilets is do we want to be providing toilet facilities for people to be hanging around on the green until two o'clock in the morning? It's effectively come and have a massive party on Twickenham Green and guess what? The council's laying on toilets to make it even nicer for you. It's, it's, it's a really tricky situation. Thanks, Peter. Okay, so um, Peter's had the question, uh, Rachel and Lee. Um, Rachel, if we get time, we'll come back to this one, but we want to try to get as many people as possible getting a question in. Um, Helen O'Hara asks a question. So Helen O'Hara, we're about to unmute you, stand by. And then we'll be going to Theresa Reid after Helen. Hi. Um, one, Hello, of the, Helen. one of the questions I have is in regard to getting some more bins on the green during the mm -hmm. summer. We have um, about four very small bins on the green and after everyone's had a good afternoon enjoying themselves in picnics, there are large bags of rubbish left on the green, lots of cigarette butts and more recently the little helium canisters that the teenagers like to inhale and leave around the place. A number of us on First Cross Road have also had rubbish put in our bins in our yard or just thrown into our, our yard. And I wondered if we could have each summer, just when there are more people on the green, some extra bins. Don't have to be there all year, but just during the, the peak season, um, just to capture some of that rubbish. Okay, um, Julia, bins. Julia yes. Eden Watson, ladies and gentlemen, our, our, our Chair of the Environment Department. Thank you. you. You missed me out earlier on, but yes, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Councillor Lee Mott, <laughs> Chair of the Environment Committee. And yes, bins are um, a hot topic at the moment. And the, the officers told me that we've got a 500% increase in the amount of yeah. litter that we're getting in our street bins and our public parks. 
partly it's because people are out picnicking and having a good time and partly it, it may be householders offloading rubbish that they've got and so on and and i'm sorry to hear that people have been putting rubbish in your bins but certainly summer bins to cope with that capacity is something that i'm happy to discuss with officers and we can see what we can do there Right. I mean, there, there, is an, there is an argument that says that if you provide more bins, there'll be more and more rubbish. So there's a balance, but I can see that um, it would be helpful to deal with the bins there. I also noticed that um, staff at the Sussex Arms were out yeah. helping to clear up the rubbish and we're yeah. grateful for that effort that they Very made. grateful. Yeah. I mean, thank you. I, thank, thank you, Helen. I don't want to turn this into some sort of um, town hall Trump. Um, affair where we just say yeah, isn't the council doing wonderful things but a, a, an independent comment we had via twitter today was i would like to congratulate the council contractors who clean twickenham green um, as it's spotless this morning at 9 a.m well done so we, we are doing what we can and i think we do need to you know highlight the positives when we can excellent thank you Theresa reed you are next on the uh, question Okay, yeah, so, ah, excellent. There you are. Hi, um, I've lived on this corner of Twickenham Green since 1983. The problem came to my attention last year. Since the 9th of July 2019, I have written to the council, to the Parks Department, every month. I have contacted my councillor, Michael Butlin, and nothing has been done. This was a problem waiting to happen. And the fact that we now have COVID has it made it a lot worse. We have men lining up, going to the loo outside in the street. We have ladies falling down drunk, pissing on the ground. We have people defecating in the churchyard. And obviously, you know, defecation can spread to COVID and the people who are cleaning up this, cleaning this up, you know, how do we know that they're not going to spread it? And the people who are doing it, aren't they going to go into our shops and buy uh, and our pubs and buy alcohol and spread it? Because they can't wash their hands. There, there are no washing facilities. The whole thing is ridiculous and it could have been stopped if only the council had put in permanent toilets or at least urinals a long time ago before COVID because it was requested and I have all the emails can, um, actually stating uh, this problem and I've now put in an official complaint to the council that they haven't done it. And basically the biggest problem apart from the defecation of course in the church are the men you know just pissing in the street and there has always been a fight. We had a 999 call where four men were lined up a local resident said, what are you up to? And they were just about to beat him up. Local residents came down to save him. And at the same time, God intervened and there was a sudden thunderstorm, a clap of thunder and lots of rain and they ran away. So what are you going to do about it? Thank you for that. Um, one of the things which we are going to do, I mean, I think that it's, um, it's difficult to suggest that the, I mean, July 19, I, I think the idea of a, country lockdown is is difficult. I mean, we, we are in not quite um, uncharted territory. Of course, we've had pandemics in this country before, but not for s decades, possibly a century. Spanish flu, probably. Um, what we have done, I mean, what I've asked to do is, is to tackle head on what you're on about. Because I think we're going to have this again now, because, I mean, we managed to get through SARS unscathed. We managed to get through swine flu, bird flu, and all of these things. This one has really hit home. So we are looking. Paul Chadwick is um, on the call now, and he will confirm that I've asked him to look at the provision, the permanent on-street provision of toilet facilities, both in Twickenham and Richmond, and in the uh, other town centres if they are deemed necessary. Because what we can't do is go back into another long period of lockdown. And if if we believe the scenes we saw at Bournemouth Beach, chances are it's coming pretty soon. Um, we need to make sure that we've got some permanent provision. So it will address the issues that you raise. However, I think that you know, no matter how many toilets that you have, you will still get people who are going to go out and, you know, just behave antisocially. And, you know, are they going to find the toilet to use? Probably not. They will just go where they want. And that's one of the stark realities that we have to face. So yes, we are, for the first time 
in however many years, and I think probably one of the first councils to be doing this, is to be looking at how we can put on-site permanent provision. It will be paid for, it will be like the Superloos uh, that we see on the continent is what I'm thinking. So, you know, 50p, however much it will cost. Um, I, I, I'm not sure um, how delighted the um, either the friends of Twickenham Green or the residents who face onto Richmond Green will be with having a permanent open urinal on the green itself, um, particularly in this hot weather, which I imagine will be a bit grim. Certainly the one in York House, which Peter mentioned, is, is a horrible festering hole. It's not nice at all. Uh, but we are looking at what we can do as a permanent provision. Okay, we are going to move on to the next question. Um, Pam McMillan. Hello. Hello, Pam. Um, my question is slightly different. It's looking ahead to next weekend when the pubs open. Yes. I think it would be really useful for all the local residents to know what numbers of people are going to be allowed into the pubs so that we are clear. So if we go into the pub, we know that we're not worrying, are there too many people in it or not? So if by the door, there's a number saying how many people should be in. And also to, for the council to publish the licensing hours as well, because I live next door to Prince Albert and straight away I know there's an anomaly because their opening hours on a Friday and Saturday, they go to midnight, but their pub garden has to shut by 11 so that local residents can get some sleep. So what will happen if they're not allowed to have customers inside with this missing hour at the end because if if it turns out that customers can sit in the pub garden till midnight there will be problems for all the local residents and families with that noise going on till midnight likewise if that pub opens till 12 and the blue Shire and the sussex close at 11 you've got the risk of people dispersing to the albert so i think I'm not sure if licensing are aware of this difference in restriction, but they do need to look into it and then publish. So it's very clear residents know. Um, and I have a very strong feeling that the pub garden should be shutting at 11 rather than we get the noise. So the residents who live on first crossroad will be getting noise possibly from the green and then further noise from the pubs in the surrounding area. So I just like to know what council and licensing will do to reassure us, please. Fortunately, we've got the head of licensing on this call, Nick Stevens. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, Pam, I did see your message come up on the, the feed, so I'd already scribbled some notes down for it. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that if the uh, licensable hours for those three pubs you're referring to aren't already on the website, we'll make sure that they are and we'll make sure they're flagged up so they're very visible on the licensing pages. In relation to the beer garden, if the hours of operation are till 11 for that beer garden, those are the hours they should be adhering to. They cannot extend them to midnight or beyond unless they apply for a temporary event notice. Now, clearly, if they do do that, there is a consultation process, whether it be a regular temporary event notice or a, um, uh, um, an emergency 10, um, and the police will be consulted as part of that process. So if we have concerns or the police have concerns, clearly we don't have to grant that temporary event notice. Uh, we can also negotiate on the conditions or the hours of operation for it. Um, just looking at the rest of your question, the number of customers for a particular premises, there's nothing within the COVID secure guidance that says that a premises has to display the safe number of individuals that are allowed in that premises. And from my recollection of the premises you're referring to, there isn't a restriction within their licenses for the number of people under normal conditions. Um, but clearly what we are obliged to do is ensure that they are complying with the COVID secure um, guidance and the legislation. Uh, so I'll ask the licensing officers to speak to the premises and see if they can do something, but it will be an informal arrangement. I hope okay. that helps. And Nick, when, sorry, councillor, Nick, yes, when, when they open, uh, you will be uh, inspecting uh, the, the, these pubs, won't you, as well? 
Uh, we will target them on a risk basis. Now, clearly the three you're referring to, we've already visited, the police yeah. have already visited, we've spoken to them repeatedly. Um, some of the commentary you've had about the toilets uh, and the fact they are open now is due to a letter that Councillor Roberts um, uh, agreed for us to send out uh, to ensure that we actively encourage those premises to provide facilities, even though they aren't physically open for members yeah. of the public to go in. Absolutely. Just an additional point on which I didn't mention on the toilets and the community toilet scheme is that um, what we've done, it's usually about 600 quid a year that people get for being part of the community toilet scheme. For the first quarter for new signups, for the first three months, we're going to give them £350 as opposed to the um, 150 quid that they would normally get. So we're trying to encourage as many pubs as possible to open and we'll be directly targeting those pubs either close to Richmond Green, Twickenham Green, any public open space, we'll be, we'll be you know, proactively approaching them and saying, look, 350 quid on the table, you're going to be open anyway, you may as well take it. And hopefully that will increase the provision of toilet facilities for the public when they're out and about. Okay, so um, Bernadette, there's, there's, there's a load of comments, which um, they are really quite comments. Um, so then I'll go straight down then to Bernadette Pitfield. Okay, fine. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Hello. Um, hello. Uh, we have a business premises and we live above it and we have an alleyway down the side of the premises directly onto Twickenham Green. I'm afraid it's going back to this old um, difficult problem, lose again. The alleyway is absolutely um, unindated with people coming down and, you know, they, they, they just don't care. I want to lay emphasis that it's not always those who are just tanked up. I had a very desperate elderly gentleman the other day um, running up and down to try and find a loo. It's, it really, I think that the council should really try and emphasize or put as a priority the idea of these portal loos. I know you've talked about it but due to cost, but Really, over these next few weeks, I feel as though it is incredibly important. On the long term, since we want to encourage everybody to use the green, it's a wonderful facility, I think that it should be wrong as a matter of norm that kiddies have to go up against trees during the day, etc. Toilets, everybody needs a toilet. I think you are actually reneging on your duty to supply them and you're relying on people like me to clean clean the streets actually of it and asking people to have 350 quid to open their loos up is obviously not going to be enough as far as the you know not many people would like to do that. Oh no these are businesses I'm talking about Bernadette not not people's houses. Yes, fair enough, but businesses, fair enough if they're in the, that trade, but many people won't, don't like going into pubs to ask to go to the loo. You know, if you've got a couple, a five-year-old and a three-year-old and it's three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, these things happen. You know, they just don't, you so we really do need public loos. You can't get them straight away. I think £4,000 a week is incredibly expensive, I do agree. But if you're asking me when I'm cleaning up a load of shit, whether that actually is um, cheap or not, I would suggest that, you know, you're, I'm being employed to do it by you. What, what we've been, um, well, what I've been asking officers to do, Bernadette, is um, where we've got our area, particular areas highlighted, uh, we'll send the cleansing teams down. I know where your business is. Mm. I will speak to officers this afternoon and ask them to add your alley to the um, schedule. Well, okay. Isabel is on the call, and I think uh, I think she, she's obviously listening to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. But I really, oh, so. I really do think the priority has to be given to thinking about public clues now and for the future. Isn't well, it? we are, as I say, what, what I want to see, and one of the conversations I've had, um, because my, my concern was that we were going to get into all sorts of nonsense about, um, oh, you can't put a structure on Twickenham Green because it's metropolitan open land or such, some such. And apparently not. It's, um, it's 
other open land of townscape importance, which allows the provision of toilet facilities on the land without having to jump through all the hoops of the Secretary of State. It, okay. it is easier yes. for places. So I, I want to see permanent provision of toilets for the very reasons that you uh, outline, because it is going to be families. It is going to be little kids. It's, it's going to be people, who, as I say, thugs, yobs, blouts, whatever you want to call them, ain't going to all queue up nicely um, and stick their 50 pence in the slot. However, good, decent, law-abiding people will. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Not at all. Okay, so um, we're, I'm going to try and keep going for as long as we can. I'm not sure how long we've got. I've got another one of these at five, by the way. Um, so um, we've got a comment. Timothy's iPad, so that's... Uh, um, Timothy, have you had a question asked yet? Because it's to do with CCTV, which I think might be a, an interesting point. Okay, I'll just, I'll just address it. T Timothy asks, urinating and defecating around the back of the cricket hut and recycling bins is a daily occurrence, plus general flight of things. Uh, can it be addressed with cameras? Can any cameras be installed? I will certainly take that back with officers and find out whether we can do them. Um, my uh, mate, Darren Rodwell, who runs um, Barking and Dagenham, he has a special um, sort of rogues gallery, which they put on YouTube, which is effectively shopper neighbor sort of style territory, which is um, if, you, if you see somebody fly tipping and we can get CCTV of the, of the culprit, they will, they will host it on the council's website. Uh, so that may be something that we want to take a look at because we do need, if, if people won't take personal responsibility, then they may need to be given personal responsibility. So that's something that we're more than happy to look at. Thank you. Uh, let me see. E. Stephen, uh, public urination is a problem. Dispersal order is not currently happening. Uh, Paul Toulouse, we've, uh, we've, we've, de we've dealt with that issue, I think, possibly not to your satisfaction, E. Stephen. I'm trying to see if there's anything new. Um, Sorry about this. This is this is. I was about TARDIS style toilets. This um, Arthur's not opening their toilets. Sorry, this is terribly boring for everybody looking at this. Um, okay. Ah, so here we are. The there's some mention of. But well, okay. Um, just on say, for Sainsbury's is mentioned. Um, this is where the real issue lies, in my view. Um, is in the supermarkets selling large quantities of alcohol at prices which um, you would not normally expect to pay if you're in a pub. And this is why I think that this is going to be an ongoing problem on our open spaces because there has never really been a culture, for want of a better word, of um, alfresco drinking in this country. Um, most people would, you know, if you want to go out, you want to go and meet your friends, then, then the standard thing is just to go to the pub. Now people are becoming used to the idea of um, buying from pubs, uh, buying from supermarkets and taking it to the green. So we are, we are trying to be as forceful as we can with the supermarkets. Be aware, of course, that places like Sainsbury's and Tesco will be lawyered up to the hilt and will resist any attempts by us to... Uh, have anything to do with their license but we will have you know if we do need to do a license review because we are seeing a pattern of behavior which can be directly linked that's the thing directly linked to that particular shop then we will then we will you know at least give it a good threat so that they can maybe a bit more um responsible in their sales i mean and twickenham uh, richmond's green for example one of the reports i've had um, over the last few days is that because people aren't working in richmond at the moment the big chiller cabinet which is right at the front door which used to be full of sandwiches for people at their lunchtime they've now filled it completely with booze and have stacked the boxes of um, you know 24 cans of Bex and 24 cans of Bournemouth cider right next to it so they are openly promoting the sale of booze as you know, to take down to the green it's something we need to get a grip on and have an open dialogue with our supermarkets about their corporate responsibility in these areas not something we're going to be shying away from. We weren't, we weren't um, shy of taking on the supermarkets in order to get better 
um, availability of services during the when COVID outbreak first started, we won't be shy about tackling them on this now. Okay. Um, Fiona Maxwell says it's not the fact of the super, the, the fault, I think you mean. It's not, it's not their direct fault, but I think that they do have a corporate responsibility. Okay, I said, Richard, were you wanting to get in there, Richard Bennett? Could somebody unmute Richard for me? Oh, I am unmuted. What did you, you wanted me to comment on? No, I, I, I thought I saw you fiddling with the side of your screen in a, in a fit of rage trying to <laughs> well, <laughs> try well, to comment. Well, I do have some things to say. Yes, I do have some comments. Um, by the way, um, First Cross Road is, is actually um, where the people, where the residence is anyway, is in West Twickenham Ward. Excellent, thank you. Uh, um, and the, well, the comments I have is that um, I don't think we have to solve problems in order to reduce them. If we can reduce the problem, it's still worth doing. And I do think that we, we do have to consider that it's not just people drinking that need these loos, as Bernadette was saying earlier on, it's everyone, children, elderly people, out walking, and the community um, scheme doesn't necessarily mean that all these facilities are open at the right times. They all tend to be open um, at times that won't be first thing in the morning and, and won't be too late in the evening and so on. So I think we have to think of providing a public solution of our own that will reduce the problem, whether it's port to lose or putting in permanent installations. Thank um, you, Richard. And we should sort out Sainsbury's because there isn't a level playing field with Sainsbury's. They're not providing any facilities for public loos and so on, as the pubs are. And so we should be more assertive with them. I agree with you on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Dan from the Cricket Club. Sorry, I overlooked you in the, in the chat. Hi, thanks, Gareth. Yeah, um, two, two points very quickly. Obviously, I'm secretary of the Cricket Club, which is based on the green, and, and, it, and it's a pavilion, folks. It's not a hut. Can we, can we get this right? You know, that's the first <laughs> thing that needs to be clarified on this discussion. Uh, that aside, two, two points. One about the toilets. We are opening um, on the 4th of July. Uh, we're not going to be playing cricket in the conventional sense on the green, but the government's guidelines will indicate that we can, we can open the pavilion in a very limited way on the 4th of July. We are part of the community toilet scheme. Um, therefore, the toilets will be um, open, but but w w we cannot uh, deal with with being swamped by people who need to go to the toilet. There's got to be a two metre distance. We've got to keep everything clean. By the way, which all costs money, obviously, which we will pay. Of course. Um, so, so we are going to do our best. But if anybody thinks that that's going to solve the problem, then, then they're deluding themselves. But we will be open from the 4th of July when there is cricket on the green. So, so um, we'd appreciate not having criticisms that we're not open all the time. Of course we're not. We're a private members club and it's, it's private members who, who do the work there. But just for the record, from the 4th of July, we've been given permission to, to move forward slowly. We're expecting cricket on the green probably at the end of July, but, we're, we're, um, but that's an issue uh, and dependent on government guidelines. The second point is about cameras. Um, really interested to hear the, the comments on cameras. Um, obviously, we see the problems with antisocial behaviour all the time, um, uh, particularly on long summer nights where we're not playing. When we're playing, it's a different matter. It's harder for, for people to put graffiti on the pavilion and such like. Um, but if it helps, we'd be very interested in hosting cameras. Um, and, and we'd be very interested in making a contribution to, uh, to, to overseeing that and to trying to stop people going to the toilet at the back of the pavilion uh, and quite frankly to behaving badly around the pavilion. So if it helps, we're, we, we're, we're very keen to have a, a further discussion about that. That's good news. Thanks very much, Dan. It's really constructive. Oh, Thank you. you. Okay, at the time it's quarter past four. Um, but, uh, Peter, you're quite right, by the way. Yes, it is not just Sainsbury's. Tesco bear as much of a responsibility for this as well. It's just that as Sainsbury's is right on the green, people do tend to gravitate towards it. It's similar that Tesco have got their problem at the Richmond site, as opposed to the Twickenham site, because it's, it's sort of out of view. Um, but yeah, but both of them need um, to be reminded of their responsibilities. Sally and Rebecca, I appreciate you're very busy. And before we do the next one of these, you've probably got so much to do. So are there any final thoughts that you'd like to offer? I mean, what might be useful, I understand that across the BCU, there's going to be additional numbers coming in um, in this weekend and the weekend after, is that correct? So th this weekend, we have 
more officers than we normally would have on duty. Now that, that's simply because we've cancelled people's weekends, obviously, and uh, making people work longer shifts. So it's not new officers coming to us. Over the last few months, the last six to nine months, we have got additional resources come in. So the uplift that the, you know, the government has, um, ha has put in place for the police. So we've got lots of new, brand new police officers starting with us, which is brilliant. Um, so we are filling our vacancies. Um, but for this weekend and next weekend, and as we go through the summer, uh, we, we're, we're looking at it um, on a, we're planning all the time. We're reviewing what's happening, where's the risk. Um, I think um, what I'd just like to say a, a couple of points. So I'm conscious that I didn't respond to all the points that were, people were, were making. Ra Rachel and Lee were making a point around um, the police presence. It would be really helpful for, for me if it's possible afterwards just to, to see uh, the, the, the chat and uh, yeah. just have a copy of that because then we can at least we can we can let our neighbourhood teams you know know that 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 is what you are saying about the. Um, the, the, the lack of presence at the times um, when uh, that, that you're talking about. So that would be helpful. Yeah, um, we can do that. And, and, and as I said before, you know, we want, you, please keep talking to us and we will keep listening and doing what we can uh, to put out the resources. And I do hear what you say about, you know, what, what one of you said you'd only ever seen somebody twice and it was not at the right time. Um, the, the, the officers on the wards, you know, there are, there are two, police officers and one police community support officer per ward. I know we in the police use the political boundaries of wards. So it's not a lot in terms of neighborhood coverage. Um, we try and flex it so that if there are issues, we, you know, we, we move across if we need to do proactive warrants or, or we need more than, more than two, of course we, we move around. But the basic model that the Metropolitan Police has and that we're resourced to is two police constables and one police community support officer per ward. And sometimes, uh, obviously they don't work 24 hour shifts as I explained, and sometimes they're not there. Uh, sometimes they're, um, they're, they're doing other things. We try to minimize that, but sometimes that happens. And certainly some of the councillors will often say to me, oh, I haven't had a ward officer for a while. And it could be because they're on maternity leave or they're injured and we don't have another a um, uh, uh, supply of officers to replace all the vacancies and we as we do with everything we um, you know we balance it all the time um, but in addition obviously to our neighborhood officers we do have 24-hour response teams um, currently the team um, is working out of Teddington because Twickenham Police Station has been refurbished uh, as you may be aware so we have officers working from Teddington officers working from Kingston and they are our 24-hour response uh, and then we then we have at this time people uh, doing late shifts and night duty shifts uh, specifically covering the parks open spaces and gatherings um, but yeah but you know please please keep talking to us um, and um, you know it's very very useful as always for me to uh, to hear your views and um, you know the, the the ward panels that are all about um, community safety and, and all these issues around antisocial behavior and crime you know, it, it, we would we'd love to get views from from those forums as well which, which we do in Richmond I have to say that Richmond are very um, the residents of Richmond borough are, are very good at um, telling telling me what, what you think about um, local policing which is exactly what I need to hear okay thank you Sally um, Jim Morrissey I, I am sorry yes you're right I did miss you so we're going to we'll meet you in a second and we'll come back to you this is what I say folks P please don't and, and certainly if this if this discussion about private members' use of the, the cricket pavilion can be taken offline, it's, it's really um, stopping people from being able to get their point across. So, um, Jim, we're going to let you have your question in a moment. I'm just going to answer directly Tessa Lush's question. Has anyone investigated imposing a curfew from 11 p.m.? Yes, we have. Our legal officers said that it would not be enforceable because we cannot impose a curfew of that type. But the antisocial behaviour public space protection order has all of the powers that we need more than a curfew does. So, where are you? Jim Morrissey. Hi. Ah, there yeah. you are. Thanks. Sorry about that. No, no problem. And uh, thank you for letting me ask my question. Um, yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, Antisocial behaviour has been definitely on the increase. I've, I've lived here for nearly five years. I've seen an increase certainly in the last year or two. 
Um, and there was something that was particularly disturbing that happened a year ago, in fact, June 19. Um, there was a young man that was beaten up by a group of 20 people. Um, the police were called. I believe the, the individuals were still hanging around on the green. Um, and it's, it was such a big event. Into, I personally heard the screams of the individual. And knowing also that when I've personally reported crime, for example, uh, I don't want to get off the topic, but I thought that I was witnessing uh, a break in to ask Italian restaurant. I called 999 twice. Nothing happened. I want to know, and I don't want to get into the ins and outs, I just want to know, was there any convictions uh, that happened as a result of what happened last year? Obviously, your police officers there uh, will be aware of this situation because it was big. So I just want to know, were there any convictions? On, from that particular... From that particular incident, because it was a very, very bad thing that happened. A man got a very bad beating by 20 individuals uh, just by the Prince Lucia pub. I just want to know if there were any convictions. And it I don't them. know. I don't can, know. Can, Sally, can I come back to you on that? I'll, I'll come back to you on that, Mr Morrissey, because I don't want to um, uh, give you inaccurate information. Um, but certainly we'll, we'll find out. We should publicise convictions, because I understand you, you want to know, have we taken any action? Uh, I can't answer that question. Okay, okay. That's, can I just ask one other question as well? Yes, of course. Okay. I, uh, and I you'll be our last like, one for the day, I think. Okay, so I, I, was, I personally was checking the crime statistics that I could get hold of for the Twickenham area. Obviously, that encompasses Twickenham Green as well. They, and I saw a huge spike from January to April. I can't go past April because I can't see any figures past that. Uh, I want to know what's responsible for that huge spike. From what I can gather, it was about a hundred or two hundred percent more than usual. So, what is it that's happened in the area to cause that spike? Uh, so, um, actually, the, the, the crime levels um, in, in, in Richmond are reducing. I, I again, I will go back to you. Since the the lockdown, clearly, it, it's been it's been very different. Far far fewer burglaries, robberies, um, still drug dealing but, um, and, and domestic abuse, but, but far less acquisitive crime, um, vehicle crime. Um, but uh, but in, in terms of uh, a, a doubling the crime numbers, I, I don't recognise that. Um, this, well, this was, sorry, this was specifically for, anti, sorry, I should have made it clear, specifically for antisocial crime, oh, well, and this was reported that. on the plumplot.co.uk website. I couldn't find any other stats, so I apologise, it comes from Ah, uh, okay. No, so, sorry, I, I, I mis, uh, misheard what you asked. Antisocial behaviour on will show a big increase, because that is all the people um, phoning us up to report breaches of the COVID health protection legislation. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. This was from, from January. So I was specific. Okay. From January to April this year. I couldn't get any figures past that. So this was... Um, yeah, uh, uh, okay. okay I, I can see where, yeah, where COVID, yeah, it came yeah, in Yeah, I mean, I'll check but it again. Started from, uh, but, um, certainly, <laughs> it's not helpful that we've categorised um, the COVID breaches as antisocial behaviour. When people call us, that's how we, we record it. Um, and then, you know, there's a huge spike in it. So it could well be from the end of March through to April that that does double it because certainly we've seen unprecedented numbers of callers. But basically people say, phoning to say, my next door neighbor has got three people roused uh, and they're not allowed to. So, um, so it's really hard, but we, there's a lot of data available on the, on, on, on the public website, the Met Police website. And again, um, we, we do like to break it down as much as we can. So I, I don't want to be defensive, but um, I, I want to reassure you that there hasn't been a huge uh, wave in crime and antisocial behaviour um, in the area. Um, I, I, I take what you say about, you you know, you, I see the comments on, on, on the bar about um, antisocial behaviour, but um, it, there, there isn't anything that has happened um, in that period that, that would make it worse. Okay, can I, can I have one final comment? So maybe I think I already know the answer to this. Uh, about a year ago or so, I had it on, I wouldn't say on good authority, that would be unfair, but I was made aware that an event had taken place by way of a whole group of individuals, many with drug problems, drink problems, kind of poor social backgrounds, whatever, I'm not going into judgment of that, 
uh, but were were moved into the area and and could therefore be responsible for a lot of this antisocial uh, behaviour. I don't know if that's true. Is that something that resonates with you? Is that just hearsay? Is that nonsense? Or did something like that happen? Uh, sorry, just just say uh, just say the time period again of that. Are you are you asking uh, me about a specific? No. Incident? So so I, I, approximately about a year ago, I, I heard of a kind of an initiative, if you like, for want of a better word, where a lot of people from uh, quite unfortunate backgrounds, be it drink, uh, drugs, uh, were kind of specifically moved out of areas because of the problems that they were causing there. And I heard that they were moved into this area, actually specifically around Strawberry Hill. Now, I don't know if that is true. That is, that is kind of hearsay. It wasn't on good authority, but I'm just wondering if that's something that you were aware of at all. Uh, I'm not specifically aware. We do, we, you know, I, let, let me be honest with you here. We look at who's coming out of prison. So we know if there's a specific risk in, in you know, serious offenders coming out. Um, in terms of, of what you're saying, I don't recognise it. We've, we've obviously worked very closely with the, the local authorities around where are people housed. I don't think, um, I, I would accurately say that we've, we've noticed a, a spike in offences simply because of people being moved in to the borough. I'm not aware of it. Um, it's nor is it a scenario I recognise, Jim. To be honest, I, 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 not saying that something like that didn't happen, but it's, it's sure. certainly not something that I that rings any bells at all. Yeah. No problem. I, I understand. Like I say, it could have just been the rumour mill. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's the but joys of social media. Uh, no, I never, I never <laughs> use social media ever. Ah, I've, I've never you're used very wise. You're very wise. So, um, but I will just say then. So, okay, so Jim. Chief Jim. Of, yeah. So I'm just going to say, I, I look forward to hearing back from, from Sally regarding that particular incident. Though. So Excellent. I, if you I, need... Oh. I need to get some specific details from you there around exactly what it is you're asking. We're always very happy to give updates, if we can, if it's not a, a, you know, a live investigation going on. Uh, so uh, somehow, if we can, we can make that work, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, I will email you directly then. Yeah. Either email me and I'll forward this on to Sally if you don't have Sally's email address. That's fine. Good. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking part. I hope you will um, appreciate that this is something that we are taking seriously. We wouldn't be having, uh, well, this, I, mean, this, I think this is an unprecedented um, style of um, community conversation that we've had this time. My thanks to everybody that's taken part. I'm sorry that we didn't get to answer every single point that's been raised. Um, just to recap, we are paying for additional parks police for what's a better park guard, and we will keep that under review going forward. It's about three thousand pounds per weekend, not for a whole week. Um, we are authorizing them to be working later shifts so that we can really crack down on you know the, the, the late night antisocial behavior. Um, we're looking at installing permanent toilets. We need to find out how much that's going to cost, but it's something that we think is going to be the right thing to do. Um, unfortunately, as we've said, we're looking at a cost of £5,000 per week per site uh, to install portaloos. Uh, so that's £20,000 a month. I can think of at least six areas around the borough that would benefit from having this provision. So that's £100,000 that we could be looking at per month to provide port -a We're doing an enhanced community toilet scheme offer so that um, we've got um, hopefully more businesses opening up their premises to allow people of all ages and whether they like going into pubs, because it's not just pubs, it's cafes as well, to try to encourage them to open up their um, toilets. We are doing what we can to make the situation better. Unfortunately, we're dealing with something of a force majeure at the moment. People can't go to the pubs, the weather is nice, and there is an availability of cheap booze, and everybody's got a bit stir-crazy after three months of lockdown, and they are going out and enjoying themselves to the best of their ability. And the vast majority, we mustn't lose sight of this, the vast majority of people going out and using our open spaces and having a drink at night with their friends are decent, law-abiding citizens. There are one or two people who absolutely wreck it for the rest of us, and we're determined to tackle that. But you know, we can't do everything all at once, and both our resources and the police resources are not infinite. So we are, we are working on addressing the issue 
and I hope, with your help and support, we'll get to the bottom of things. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for all of the panel members that have made their themselves available. And of course, if you do have any questions, then you can email directly to your ward councillors and they will be able to help you. Do feel free to copy me in if you think that might help. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. And I do hope you have a pleasant and peaceful and trouble-free weekend. Thank you.